right. And we are live. There we go. I look like a professional with a microphone. What's going on, everybody? This is Rob Garcia, the Warrior Strategist. And it is a Monday. And I'm doing uh, a live broadcast in the middle of the day because I <laughs> don't give a shit about um, keeping any type of consistent broadcasting schedule. <laughs> I uh, hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I just got back from the coffee shop and they have one guy running the register, doing all the cooking and I couldn't even get coffee. So I just came back home after doing a strategy session and they didn't get any money. So um, that's a good business lesson for them. All right. Today, I'm going to talk about small actions that are going to help you in business. Um, none of this is going to be super cost uh inclusive like it's not gonna uh, i'm not gonna suggest anything that costs a ton of money i'm gonna suggest things that are common sense that will steer you back into alignment and possibly help you if you have a broken system in business um it's it's important to circle the wagons different times because the one mistake that business owners make and entrepreneurs make is they wake up and they're reactive to things. They're not proactive. And if you don't know the difference, reactive means you wake up and you just react to things popping off in your business. But you're not really like being a leader. You're not making changes. You're not, you're not uh, developing strategies or creating actions that are going to make your business better, right? So today... We're going to talk about those actions and how they can help you. Um, before we get started, let's uh, give a shout out to the sponsors. Of course, Mike's Damascus Knives. Check this out. Uh, check them out at mikesdamascusknives.com. I recently did a big news push for Mike, so maybe we'll get him uh, on some TV stations. Mike's a great dude. He hand forges these. He's been on Forged and Fire and makes amazing Damascus steel. Tactical kitchen and um, what do they call it? Industrial usage. Uh, one of my favorite sponsors, Mike, is a great, great knife maker, and the quality is unbelievable. And he can put your name on your knife for a very small fee. And all knives come with the custom sheath. I believe they're crafted by Mike's mother. So, Mike's Damascus Knives.com. All right, let me pop in comments and be sure and say hi if you're checking this out. Let me know who you are and what you're working on. If you have no idea who I am, identify yourself and tell me what you do. Because I am Rob Garcia, the warrior strategist, and I do PR, and I do visibility, and I own Shift Advanced Life Design Magazine, and I teach people how to be very, very visible. But today, we're talking more about business systems. So I'm going to share some of the things that I've done that have been highly effective in increasing my own um, my own business systems. And one thing that it's important to know, and we welcome Anthony Triplett. What's going on, Anthony? Anthony is a sheepdog, a protector, a guardian. Great dude. Um, one thing before we get started on any of this business training, it's important to know your customer journey. What we call the path to purchase. How does someone go from seeing your stuff to buying it? How does someone view you and turn that into some type of a sale? Once you understand the customer journey, you're going to be better at emulating it. You're going to be better at replicating and creating that process. And a lot of people never really think about this, right? My own customer journey, people will usually see a video or they see a post I do or a client result, and then they message me. And then we have a conversation. And if I can help them and they have the budget for it and they have a good story, I'll take them on as a client. And the magic happens over and over again. 19 people on TV, five people in industry magazines. That's a lot of magic. Um, love you too, Anthony. I love what you do, man. You're very passionate. You uh, you definitely give your give your all. And 
I'll always shout out your work. Um, I'm really curious, Anthony, what you're doing next for business stuff, actually. Um, you don't have to share it here. I mean, you can if you want. Um, but if you want, you can message me as well. I'm just very curious. I've always been really interested in your stuff and how I can support you. Um, but customer journey is the first thing you have to understand and you have to know. Now, there are a lot of ways to create a customer journey. You could literally do a Facebook Live every single day in the morning, 8 a.m., make a branded show, and just talk about whatever services you offer, okay? You could do regular Facebook and LinkedIn posts. You can do a LinkedIn carousel. You can do uh, you know, paid ads. You can do email blasts to your lists, whatever. All of this can be the customer journey. Essentially, um, you're creating Dr. Strange timelines. I'm a big Marvel head, obviously. Um, but you're creating Dr. Strange timelines in the, in the context of you're opening up pathways for people to somehow be emotionally uh, attached to you and want to purchase something for the direct result of solving a problem. That is what a purchase is. That is what a sale is. Um, the customer journey needs to be studied by more business owners, and more entrepreneurs, because very few people actually think about it. And they don't ask themselves the question, like, how does someone see whatever it is that I do and then hire me? And it can be a lot of things. You can guest speak in a group. You can attend business meetings in your local network in your city. Um, you can issue press releases. You can, you know, do paid ads, like I mentioned before. But the point is, there's a lot of ways to create a customer journey to get more sales. And more people need to think about this. Like I know my customer journey. I know when I go out there and I teach PR stuff and I talk about the tactical CEQ business visibility guide with the full social media uh, template, sales are going to happen. And if you're really good at packaging up and developing your client results on social media and creating custom graphics and letting people know like what the experience is of working with you and what the you know, what the traditional results are, you're going to have more people reaching out to you because they'll see you as a problem solver. So anyway, that's the first thing. It's just thinking about the customer journey. What are you doing to create the customer journey? More people should think about this. All right. The next thing that I do that you guys should implement is strategy sessions. I had one today. It was awesome. I went to a coffee shop. I listened to music. I busted out my graph paper and my dollar store pen. And I just wrote out, okay, what are the results I want to create this week? Who am I working with? What are my projects? How long is each thing going to take? And what day, you know, what's priority? And then what day should I do them? And there we go. That's my weekly schedule. So every Monday, I go to a coffee shop. I do a strategy session for the entire week. I write down my, my goals and my hopes and my dreams. And, and no, I'm kidding. I, I write down um, all the shit that I have to do during the week, who I'm working with. And then um, very specific tasks and how long they're going to take. And guess what? It keeps me in flow. I know exactly the four things I'm going to get done today. And if I get done a little early, maybe I'll play some Xbox. Who knows? Or I'll go out for a, a drink somewhere, reward myself. Point is, strategy sessions are great, especially if you're like me and you have unbelievable amounts of entrepreneurial ADD. Um, a strategy session and making a schedule of what you're doing is tremendously helpful for your productivity. So just looking at mine, I know exactly what I'm going to be working on. I popped in like priority. And then I know exactly like my client list. I know uh, what side projects I need to work on. I even put in a section for self-learning because I need to learn TikTok a little better and I need to learn attract well a little bit better. So I'm going to be doing some self-education, self-education this week. Strategy sessions, self-learning, unbelievably valuable. So that's the next thing I do. Um, what's next on my list? This is a pretty, there's like seven things on this list. And like I said, you don't have to do like all of them, but there will be, I would say if you implemented even two of these things, you're going to see a lot more success in your business. You're going to be a lot more focused and you're going to have better driven results. So we've talked about isolating the customer journey, 
identifying it, and then um, working at it. The next thing is a strategy session where you sit down, you map out what needs to be done, what your goal is, maybe your income goals, and then um, your taskings, how long they're going to take and what day you're going to assign yourself to do them. What's up, Rob? Good to see you, man. Um, the next thing, social media planning. Believe it or not, um, I actually sit down and as a strategist, part of visibility strategies are helping people with social media. And um, not to not to advertise this too much, but um, it's very useful when you have fill-in worksheets for your social media and you've got a complete listing of the types of social media posts out there. This is an awesome guide. If you want the digital version, it's 47 bucks. Message me. Um, but the point is social media... It's very easy to get overwhelmed, but you should have a strategy. Don't just wake up and just wing it every single day. It's far better for your results and your engagement if you have strategy and ideas already in play and you're using social media that aligns with your business model. And this is a big one, guys. This is one of my favorite things to teach because it's such a light bulb for so many people. If you have a service based business, you probably need to have discussions with people. So you're going to want to use Facebook and LinkedIn and TikTok to drive traffic and then Twitter to drive traffic. If you have a goods-based business, you want one that's reliant on photography and images. So you want Pinterest, TikTok, and Instagram, <clears throat> and then Twitter to drive traffic. Focus on those social media platforms versus trying to be on every single one of them and you'll see better results because you're matching the platform. You're optimizing it to your business model. Okay. Social media planning is important. Every single day I get up before I'm even out of bed, I pop in a discussion question. Some of these are strategic in nature to provide leads. So some of the things I pop in the morning are make a business wish. I usually do that on Monday and I come back to it. That one gets a lot of engagement. What's the weakest area of your business? Our sales. How many of you guys are going to buy a press release this year? How many of you have been on TV? Um, how many of you need help with your PR plan? Stuff like that. Um, but the point is by asking lead generation questions, you're creating warm leads organically. You don't have to hire a digital marketer. You don't have to hire one of these slick people uh, on Facebook ads. You can literally ask your way into sales. And I made a $4,000 sale from a single posting that said, make a business wish. And I just read the room. So when people were making their business wishes, I was looking and I was thinking, okay, is that something I can help them with my skill set? And it worked out well for everybody. They were very happy with my services. Uh, I got a nice, nice, good sized client. But the point is, um, strategic social media planning can be very good for your business. And a lot of us do need help with it. A lot of us aren't always intuitive at it. You have a lot of options. But like I said, match the social media to your business model, whether your service or goods based. Hmm. All right. The next thing that you can do is a local network. How many of you guys are actually in a local network group? Do you attend business meetings in your area? Do you uh, try and make a, a local audience? Um, for me, I was in exceptional entrepreneurs for a long time, going to meetings every week, and I met a lot of great people. It's a phenomenal organization. Um, I was in fire up connect, which I still am. Um, I was attending meetings at the Dallas veterans chamber of commerce, amazing organization. If you guys want to belong to a great group, um, uh, filled with veteran business owners, check out the, the Dallas veterans chamber of commerce, um, run by Christy Rimmel, unbelievable organization. I need to start going to meetings again. It's been a hot minute. They probably think I, I vanished. Um, and recently I've been getting very active in the, in SoCal's, uh, bag group, business associates group. And I met a lot of wonderful people there. I've been going to their events, but 
I've been building my in-person network in San Diego. Um, I'm going to be the largest PR firm in San Diego. It's already, I, I've already decided it. Like Thanos, I am inevitable. I cannot be stopped. And by building up this network and making these friends, um, this is how I'm creating my own uh, local local network. Um, the next thing you should think about is the warm leads list. And this is a big one, guys. Um, the warm leads list isn't complex. It's a piece of paper. And if somebody comments on your stuff and they show a lot of enthusiasm or they're always like checking out your, your broadcasts um, or your social media, whatever, write down their name in the warm leads list and then get on a call with them and just find out what's going on. You're not trying to pitch them. You're not trying to sell them. But if they are really into what you do, they're really enthusiastic. They're probably a good match as a client. And what I do for the warm leads list is I write down their name. I get on a call with them. And then I just create content that creates value for them. And over time, if they see my client results or they see like something that they like, they're going to hire me. I don't push the sale. I don't um, get super aggressive with people. I don't need to. I don't need to manipulate people. Um, but the warm leads list is something everyone should have because a soft no today is a hard yes a month from now. And you need to fine tune your sales ear when you're on calls with people. Learn the difference between a soft no and a hard no. And you're going to get a lot more sales because sometimes people just need to wait for a check or they need to wait for, you know, some like a business license to go through or, you know, uh, uh, they're going through a divorce, just something. They love your stuff. They want to work with you. But do you know how many business owners have gotten a soft no and just walked away from the lead forever and never followed up on it? Tons. Thousands of dollars just waiting. And all you had to do was follow up a few weeks later. Warm leads list, guys. It is valuable. I have like four pages of warm leads stapled together. And I have the dates written of when to contact them. I know if I've had a call with them. And I can check up on them. They will be sales. And if they can't afford me, I can have them just join my membership group. And they get to work with me for 150 bucks a month. It's an awesome win-win. Um. <clears throat> for somebody and, and Kyle Wentworth popped up on LinkedIn. Kyle's a, a great friend of mine and a client and the warm leads list would be very beneficial for Kyle. Cause he's a busy dude and he has to have specialized clients. He's a cybersecurity uh, expert uh, provides fractional uh, CTO, CIO, CISO services to companies it took me a month and a half just to figure that out because Kyle is a brilliant dude and thank God I'm a tech writer and I learned how to speak, uh, speak genius. So the point is, um, let's say Kyle's putting out content. He's, he's created an article. He's, uh, written a very informative, you know, piece on cybersecurity and if he tags, he at mentions, three CTOs of companies he wants to work with on LinkedIn and they start showing enthusiasm and they start having some comments. His next step is just to invite him to a call because Kyle can talk. He gets on, he knows what he's talking about and he can flat out get to the, the root of somebody's um, issues with cybersecurity. And so if Kyle just developed that warm leads list and was very deliberate about it and spent, I don't know, 30 minutes a week on it, sales go up. Targeting is very important, but connection is also very important. Um, anytime I'm doing stuff on LinkedIn, I'm going to tag a few people. I'm going to use hashtags. And I have a list of the top 15 companies in San Diego and the names of every single marketing officer. Why? Because that's my warm leads list and CMOs, chief marketing officers, hire PR people. They need to. 
because they often do their own PR and they're not always great at it. So that's the warm leads list. That's how it works. Um, the next thing you should have is a compendium, which is just a grouping of papers that are your most important pieces of information. So maybe it's a listing of a certain group of people um, that are client avatars. Maybe it's all the real estate agents in your, you know, your, uh, your network. Maybe it's a listing of tech podcasts for a, a client. Um, maybe it's a listing of, you know, business groups you belong to or Facebook groups that are really valuable to you, whatever. The compendium is just a resource of your most valuable information for quick access. I'm old school. I'm still going to use paper. I'm not going to use Excel spreadsheets. I know Kyle's screaming at the screen right now, and he's probably going to tell me I need an online electronic database. Um, I'm still going to use paper. In a manila folder, readily accessible next to my desk, labeled the compendium, or I'm just going to use graph paper, folded over, stapled with all my information. I can just grab it. Quick reference guide for my most important stuff. That's why I call it compendium. Um, after that, one thing that's been very helpful has been online groups, whether it's Facebook groups, whether it is, uh, you know, weekly, uh, calls, whatever. Um, every Tuesday I do a group call that's free and it's, it's a way to get to know me, but it's personal and business. It's not a networking group. It's very informal. Anyone can join as long as they're not dumb. Um, and we honestly just go around the room and we talk and we share some, some, Pretty personal stuff sometimes, but it's a very intimate group. We also talk about business. We support each other. We laugh. We just have a good time. I don't even have a name for it, um, but it's good for my own mental health because it's some of my favorite people. And so if you guys ever feel like you're isolated or you're kind of lonely, host a group chat once a week. Just get on, get on Zoom. And let people know. Um, and you'd be surprised the connections you make. Because I don't even do it for business. I mean, a lot of my clients do show up in these calls. But I, I do it more just to have social interaction um, across the country with all kinds of people. And I've had some pretty awesome VIPs pop in there as well at times. Um but I'm telling you, hosting group calls is very, very therapeutic. And it's something that has helped me a lot in business. And it's good to just keep um, keep up with people. So, and Kyle says, check out Remarkable Tablet. Cool. I'll look into that, Kyle. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so online groups are really helpful. Facebook groups are helpful. Um, you have a lot to choose from. There's Coaching Jungle if you're in the coaching space. There is Vetpreneur Tribe. If you are a veteran, it's a great Facebook group, 16,000 members. Um, there is the Dallas uh, Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have my own group called uh, Success Odyssey, and it's about 250 people. They're all hand-selected, and it's not about business. Um, it's people that have to be hand-picked, and we just support each other in business and life. We talk about some personal stuff, and that's a private Facebook group. Um, we have therapy Tuesday where we just vent or talk about whatever. Um, but that's been very good for me, but I also have the tactical CEQ group where if you're serious about being a cele business celebrity, I train every single week. Um, that one's actually free. I just don't tell people about it, but if either of those sound interesting to you and we know each other, um, drop me a message and, and I'll be happy to send you an invite, but I keep these small and intimate for a reason just so, um, just so we can have that, that connection. All right. And then the last thing you guys should be looking at, and Kyle, this is, this is a chance where I get to flip the script and suggest something for you. Automation. You should be automating your emails and you should be automating your social media. Um, any business owner, any entrepreneur. Um, it's okay to shoot from the hip on social media sometimes, but you should have content going out to most social media platforms that are in alignment with your business model. And there's a lot of automation systems that are out there. I use Hello Woofy. I populate the Vetpreneur Tribe group uh, with four posts a day in perpetuity with Hello Woofy, and it's like $100 a year. It is very cheap. It integrates with LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, any Facebook group you own and any Facebook business page you have. You cannot re-automate uh, social media on a Facebook personal page. 
but everything else you can. Um, right now, one of my big goals I'm working on, I'm going to completely automate my LinkedIn um, in perpetuity for three month chunks. And I'm, I'm making a lot of content. And my, my goal is not to spam people. My goal is to share really good content to help people. Um, PR tips, visibility tips, um, how to, you know, do social media better, stuff like that, free YouTube videos, uh, ebook freebies to grow my own list while helping people and getting my name out there. But essentially it's what business celebrities do. They are constantly visible. They're constantly, um, being seen and you want to be that person that when somebody sees your face, they're like, oh, wow this person is going to teach me something really cool. Um, there's a lot of LinkedIn influencers that actually put out some pretty good stuff. Um, I think Ruben Hadid and Richard Vanderblom, um, those guys are wildly popular, but they, they put out a good amount of content. That's, that's good looking stuff. That's what I, what I want to do on the PR and visibility side of the house is create, um, <clears throat> create some, some good stuff. All right. So that's about everything I've got. Um, Let's see, uh, real quick with, while Kyle's watching this, I'm um, still waiting on an approval for something I sent you a while back. So just check your emails and then I'm, I'm doing a push for the casinos um, for a TV story for you, for, for Kyle. So that's going to be this week. I don't need anything from you. It's, it's um, straight up just me pitching reporters to get you on TV. So that's, that's Kyle's deliverables for the week. Um, reach out if you need to, by the way. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to summarize what I've been talking about um, real quick for everybody watching. And I want to thank everybody like Kyle, Lori, uh, Anthony Triplett. Um, first things to learn the customer journey, how people go from seeing you to purchase, understanding that pathway, how to create that pathway. Next thing is strategy sessions once a week. Very good uh, for your business just to get clarity and alignment. Um, social media planning. Think about it ahead of time. Think about what you're trying to do with your social media and match your social media platforms with your business model. Uh, like I said before, if you're service-based, you want to be Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And then if you are goods-based, uh, you want to be Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok, and then use Twitter as a megaphone to drive traffic. Um, create a local network by attending groups in your area. You can go to meetup.com to find out uh, what groups are around. Uh, create a warm leads list and track it for people that are interested in your stuff. Create a companion for most valuable information. Uh, get involved in online groups like Facebook groups or weekly calls. And then try to automate your social media and your email lists. Um, it will save you a lot of time and it will help you to be more effective. And these are the tips that pros use. All right. That's all I got for today, guys. Uh, it's time for me to get to work. But I just want to let you know I appreciate all of you. I hope you guys are doing amazing. And... Um, to our continued success. I'm Rob Garcia, the Warrior Strategist, and as always, stay famous. See you next time.